Hello there AP Psychology students. Today I'm going to be introducing you to social psychology. This is a really interesting subfield of psychology. Actually the University of Minnesota has quite a good social psychology program and we've already talked about social psychology in our first unit and I'll be reminding of you, uh, you of those studies as we um, go through the rest of this week. Here are the major topics of social psychology, and uh, you can read these yourself. Um, we'll touch a little bit on each of them. But today, I'm gonna make this really brief. I want you to think about this. You are driving at the posted speed of 55 miles per hour on Highway 62, heading uh, east through Edina. All of a sudden, a much to your surprise, another car swerves in front of you, cutting you off proceeds to do the same with the cars in front of it. So it just continues to swerve in and out and in and out of traffic, going very much above the posted speed. What are you gonna think about the driver of that car? Let's be honest, what are your first thoughts? Really, you know what I'm talking about. I know what I'd be thinking. I'm thinking that driver is a jerk. That driver should be caught. I hope one of you Dinah's finest is under the bridge there at Highway 100 because you know what? They are a bad driver. Right? I know that's what I'd be thinking. But on the other hand, I could be thinking about this place right here. So, are we thinking that crazy driver should get a big fat speeding ticket? Most likely. Or are we saying, oh no. I wonder if that driver is meeting someone at the ER, the wonderful Car and Plateau Emergency Center, which I'm sure some of you have been to before. Now I have actually sped on Highway 62 very fast to get to the emergency center. Probably more times in my life than I wish that I would. And uh, at each of those times when I have done that, I've thought if a police officer stops me, I'm gonna hop into their car and tell them to take me to the ER. Um, because I don't want to be a danger to anyone and they can get me there faster. The reality is that most of the time when we see somebody do something like this, we're going to assume that it's something about them. They like to drive fast. They don't care about other people. So we call these attributions. So attributions are the way that we um, describe or the way that we attribute one's behavior. If we say that that driver is a jerk, that driver just likes to speed too much, then we're using what's called a dispositional attribution. And oftentimes we find ourselves using dispositional attributions when uh, describing another person's behavior. As a teacher, I might see a student who comes into class regularly who is tired and sleeping and I think, oh, they're just staying up too late playing video games. Uh, they're just irresponsible, you know, they should go to bed earlier, they're using too much social media. You know, it'd be really easy for me to make those assumptions about a student that I see falling asleep a lot in class, just like that speeding driver. Um, a situational attribution is when we attribute one's actions to environmental or group influences. So if we were to look at that driver of that car speeding on 62, and we would say, you know what, I think I wonder if they do have someone at the ER that they're meeting, someone who's in a medical emergency. Well, that would be a situational um, attribution. If uh, I have a student and, and I've been thinking, oh, they're just lazy, you know, they're just, you know, staying up and doing stuff on social media. And then I find out actually they're taking care of uh, a sick parent or a sick sibling or a new puppy. Well, then I might go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. And so this is actually a really important concept because what it leads us to is um, something we call the fundamental attribution error. Um, the fundamental attribution error is our dual tendency to overemphasize personal disposition while you evaluating the behavior of others. And we ascribe situational factors to our own. So if you think about riding after a Super Bowl, for example, when the Eagles won, um, there was a great deal of riding um, after that Super Bowl win. And there were fires that started. And, you know, this happened here 
in Minnesota as well. I think the Gophers won a hockey championship and there was rioting over on the U of M campus. Um, think about protests that turned violent in Minneapolis in 2020. And of course, this is one of the tragic fires that um, occurred. And I believe that that corner is still in very bad disrepair. During something like a, a protest that turns violent, it is likely that there were people in those crowds that had no intention of being violent. But when the situation arose that um, the situational factors overtook their own ability to act as in, an individual, uh, they become part of a group. And these situa situational factors might indeed cause one to do something that they would never do on their own. Now, certainly some of the people that started the fires in Minneapolis might have started a fire on their own. I don't really know. I don't know the backgrounds of them. But when I think about mass protests and things that become violent, there are almost always people within that group that normally would not become violent, would not turn towards violence, but because of the situation, they were brought into that uh, behavior. So keep that in mind as you judge other people's behavior and you judge your own. This is a really important concept in social psychology. I'd like to see if you can try to apply it. Thanks for listening.